I want to transition over to these stories over here. Um, there's a number of stories that came out from the Vatican over the last 24 hours that was just jaw hit the ground. And it's strange because, you know, in one sense, I'm not surprised because, I mean, I'm just – you see these kind of things all the time. And in another sense, I'm completely surprised. Like, I did not expect these things to happen. And now the number one story, and I wanted to cover all these, but there's just no way we're going to have time to cover all these. So I'm just going to focus on this one for now, and maybe next week we'll have time to cover the other ones. But do you know who Cardinal Mueller is? Cardinal Mueller, he was um, the head of the CDF before, was it before Fernandez? Is he the one that right before Fernandez? I forget. Uh, but Cardinal Mueller was the head of the Congregation of Doctrine of Faith, which is basically in the church um, in the last 60 years, the head of the CDF is the number two guy, basically. Now you have the Pope, and then you have the head of the CDF. That's typically what it is in the last 60 years. Now, Cardinal Mueller put it, did an interview, and Diane Montagna just put out a translation of that interview. Very, very concerning on some of the things he said here. He came out talking about the sin of synodality, and one of the things he said about it, we'll start here for now. One of the things he said about it was because we have lay people involved in this, lay people voting in this, it changes the character of a synod. It changes it so it's not really a – you can't, he's saying that basically it cannot be a Vatican III because it won't have the authority of a Vatican III because lay people are involved in it. He says, quote, the bishops participate in their office by exercising collegial responsibility for the whole church together with the Pope. If the laity participate in it with the right to vote, then it no is no longer a synod of bishops or an ecclesiastical conference and does not have the apostolic teaching authority of the Episcopal College. To speak of a Vatican III can only can occur to an ignorant person because from the outset, a Roman synod of bishops is not an ecumenical council. When the Pope could not subsequently declare without ignoring the divine right of the bishops, a Vatican Council III. Now, I'm confused, though, about what he means by this. I'd love to sit down with Cardinal Mueller and ask him a ton of follow-up questions to this interview. Because one thing is, let's just say, let's just say that it's a completely lay-run event. Let's say we have a completely lay-run synod. And we draft this document, and it says all sorts of things. It doesn't really matter. Just imagine whatever it says on it. Maybe orthodox, maybe not orthodox, doesn't really matter. And every single bishop in the world signs it. And the Pope then ratifies it. Is it not a binding document then? Because it was written by the ghostwriter of it is lay people? That seems to not make sense to me. It seems not to make sense to me. It doesn't seem to me, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody can correct me. It seems to me... That as long as it is ratified by the bishops and the Holy Father, it would then become magisterial. Or maybe it would not be to the degree of a council, a Vatican III, but it certainly would be magisterial. It would certainly be magisterial. It certainly would hold a high degree of magisterium because it's signed by all the bishops and the Holy Father. And that's basically what the synod is. It doesn't really matter whether or not the synod is bad or good. I think it's going to be bad. But despite the fact that if it's bad or good... It's a synod, which involves lay people and bishops, not just lay people. It's involving the bishops. And it's called by the Holy Father. And it's presumably going to be accepted by them all. And the Holy Father will then ratify or not ratify it. So then how could you say that it does not have a character of authority? Now, the most concerning thing here, the most concerning thing here was he was asked what would happen if the Synod Assembly approved blessings of homosexual couples and a change of sexual morality or the elimination of the priestly celibacy or allowing female diaconates, he said, would you accept it? He said, well, one, we have to take away priestly celibacy because that's not a dogmatic issue. He says, I'm against it, against getting rid of priestly celibacy. But that's not a question of doctrine. That's a question of discipline. He said, but however, he said, the formal authority of the Pope cannot be separated from the substantive connection with Holy Scripture apostolic tradition and dogmatic decisions of the magisterium that preceded him. Otherwise, as Luther misunderstood the papacy, he would put himself in place of God, who is the sole author of his revealed truth. 
instead of simply witnessing faithfully in the authority of Christ to the revealed faith in an unabridged and unadulterated manner and presenting it authentically to the church. And here is the biggest thing here. Here is the mind-blowing thing here. In such an extreme situation from which God can save us, every ecclesiastical official would have lost his authority and no Catholic would be obliged any longer to religiously obey a heretic or schismatic bishop, end quote. Whoa, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. And I would love, like I said, I'd love to sit down and ask him what he means by this. Because then who gets to decide who is a heretic or schismatic bishop? Because I've heard from many people claiming that Cardinal Mueller is a heretic and a schismatic bishop. I've heard it from many a set of a conscious groups that Cardinal Mueller says, has said many heretical things in the past. So does that mean, so who gets to judge that? Do I get to judge that based on my own private opinion? Or do I have to trust another bishop? But which bishop? Do I trust Cardinal Supich? Or do I trust Bishop Strickland? Which bishop do I follow? But what if it's the Bishop of Rome? What if it's the Holy Father himself? What does that mean? This is major implications and coming from somebody like Cardinal Mueller, who is incredibly theologically educated, who is the head of the CDF for years, who is a cardinal of the church, this has a really heavy degree of weight in terms of his opinion. But I want to know what he means by this and how exactly this plays out, practically speaking. What does this look like? And who gets to decide? That's the big question. And what does that mean for the things that have already happened? What about all the bishops in Germany who are already accepting these things? Are they all heretic schismatics? So what does that mean for the faithful there? Can you not go to church there? What if you are in a diocese in America and your bishop is a heretic and a schismatic? What do you do? This has major, major, major implications. And I would love to ask him these questions. And I hope somebody does a follow-up interview with him clarifying these points because this is a huge has major implications about what happens next. We're definitely going to have to continue with this story and maybe invite some people on to talk about this because I, my, I'm, whew, this is crazy. Did not expect that coming out yesterday. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some gun control related issues. We'll be right back with more right after this.